So today we're going to be checking out the Dorothy Rapid Cold Brewer. Now this is supposed to make 12 hour to 24 hour cold brew that's been steeping in the fridge overnight, but basically make it in 15 minutes, which sounds crazy. So this basically comes in a few pieces. You have the main base or station, which is, I guess, kind of magnetic is how it creates the whirlpool action. It does have just some little rubber feet to help kind of keep it in place. You have a main glass pitcher. Now this silver portion that's inside, I already put it inside and filled the water almost up to the full line, um, but that was connected to this. You do have to remove that and have this main portion off uh, for us to start. So let's get into using this and testing it out and seeing how it tastes after running for a, basically a 15 minute cycle. Okay, so here is how we will get started. Uh, let's just, let me move a few things. Now I wanna start off by telling you the time. So depending on how long you want this to steep for is how powerful it's going to be. Um, so if you want a full flavor, strong brew, which is the equivalent to 16 hours, go 20 minutes. If you want a lighter brew, go 10 minutes. If you want a super strong brew, go 30 minutes. So just between 10 to 30 minutes based on how strong you want it. Now you do need coffee grinds. You're gonna need two thirds of a cup. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start this off though, because we need to get our whirlpool going first. So we're gonna start off, you're gonna see some sounds in there. Ooh. We do have a little hair I see in there from my cat. Let's see if we can grab it here. Boom, we got it, okay. So we're gonna start it and we're gonna start by turning it halfway. Now this is going to create a whirlpool. Now you need to watch because you wanna wait for that whirlpool to touch that bottom tip, okay? So once that touches the bottom tip, now we can start to turn the power up a little bit because that's increasing the strength of the whirlpool. So you can see that. Now we're gonna turn it up all the way. Look at that cool whirlpool design. Now this is where we add our coffee. So we're gonna go ahead and scoop close to two thirds of a cup and we're gonna add our coffee in. Uh, you're seeing it's all getting caught up there. I'm not gonna add too much at a time. Right, we wanna keep that whirlpool going. I'm gonna be honest, we need a little bit more here. The sound is not great, okay? Not a huge fan of the sound. Now I'm gonna say that's around two thirds of a cup. We're gonna stop it right there. So now, this is pretty straightforward here. We gotta let this run like this for around 20 minutes. We're gonna leave it for, I think, 15. Let's see if we can put the top on here at all. Okay, so I was able to put that on just a little bit, and that seems to be letting uh, the whirlpool still go, and it also helps with the sound a little bit. So it did block out a little bit of the sound. Don't push it down too far, or else it'll probably impede the whirlpool. But we're now gonna leave this for 10 minutes and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we are officially around 20 minutes later. I left it for maybe just over 15. Now what we have to do is you're supposed to let this rest for three to four minutes. And this is gonna allow some of those top coffee grounds to get to the bottom. Now this is a strain filter that no coffee grinds should be able to get through. With that being said, we wanna make sure any that are at the top, which there's actually a couple sticking to the side here, uh, we want them pretty much all pushed down. So we're gonna allow this to go for three to four minutes, shrink down, and then we will give it a little pour. And we're gonna see how well this actually steeped our coffee. Okay, so we let it rest for roughly five minutes. There's still a bunch on the top, but I'm hoping most of it went to the bottom. So I guess all that's left is to uh, try to get the water out. So I'm just gonna put this in and you should see the seal kind of making sure everything sticks out. And we wanna push it down just a little bit until we're getting that coffee. Now look how the seal is pushing all of those coffee grinds down and only letting the liquid up. Now this will be a test to see how well of a job it does keeping those grinds out. Now we can put it to the top. We can push down, down, down until we get the grinds closer to the top. And now we can commence pouring. There we go. Okay, it's looking kind of like almost like an iced tea. So I'm gonna try it without cream. Yeah, I actually don't see any coffee grinds whatsoever. So it looks like most of them are just trapped down below in that section there between the silver cup that was in there 
and another seal. So uh, I don't think we're going to have too big of an issue in terms of, and then it just locks into place after. Um, so now we should be able to get all of that liquid out right there. So let's give this a little taste here. So this should taste like overnight steeped uh, cold coffee. Let's try it. Mm, smells strong. So this was, uh, it was more of like a hazelnut blend. So it definitely smells a little more hazelnutty, which is good. I like flavored iced coffee. Mmm, okay. So it definitely tastes not like just cold coffee, right? So there's that people that make iced coffee just using cold coffee, not the same. This tastes like it was steeped. Now, I it's not quite super strong. So this is something I would have left running for another five to six minutes, I think, but it does have a nice taste to it. And adding some sugar and some cream, I think is going to take this over the top. So honestly, uh, I have to say it works. It's pretty successful and uh, definitely a, a kitchen gadget that if you like cold brew coffee, this is a rapid, quick way of making in the morning with really zero to no effort.